In this video, I'm going to show you all the new features of InDesign 2021. Join me and see how to make the most of the new Content Aware Wrap and all the other new features in this update. If you are interested to check out specific features, just use the chapters in the progress bar or the time codes in the description. The coolest new feature of InDesign 2021 has to be the Content Aware Wrap. Text Wrap has been around for a while and there's several ways of using it. And essentially what it is for to keep text away from important details within the images in the background. Now, in case you have an image like this, the previously available options were not really helpful. So detect edges, for example, wouldn't be able to do much here, but we can test it out. So I'm just going to select the image and go to the option within the text wrap panel called wrap around object shape. And if I choose the original feature called detect edges, it's not going to find anything in the image. However, if I now choose the new select subject option, which is based on the same feature that we can find in Photoshop, this is going to use Adobe Sensei, the artificial intelligence and machine learning, understanding what's the salient detail in the image. So immediately it found what it needs to avoid. And if we want, we can also add a little bit of offset around it, just increasing that area. And now if I select the text frame, you can see wherever I move this, it will always avoid those details. So either I have it on the left side or on the right side. So this is really cool. And once again, all you have to do is to select the image frame and make sure that you set up the third option under the text wrap panel. And also make sure that the type is set to select subject, which is by the way, the default setting from now on. If you are looking for the text wrap panel, you can find it in the window menu. So it's right there. And also notice that now we have the control feature here with which we can hide or show the control bar. Similarly to Illustrator now by default, it is hidden. So if you wish to bring it back, just choose that option from the window menu. Once you apply content aware wrap on an image, it will automatically affect all your text frames. So once again, here, I'm going to choose that option and make sure it's set to select subject. See how quickly it identified the person in the image. Once again, we can increase the offset a bit and notice how both of these text frames immediately get affected by the text wrap. Now, in case you want the text frame not to be affected by this feature, just make sure you press Command or Control B to get the text frame options for the selected frame and turn on the Ignore Text Wrap option. And that way you can disable it for that selected frame. You can see it's still applied on the left side, but on the right side, I can disable it. Let's just do a couple of quick tests with the same option. Once again, let's choose select subject here on the left side. It found it really quickly and there is our path created. Now we can use the text frame and move it around and it will nicely align to the image. Let's try it on this image. And by the way, you can use these settings and save them as an object style and that will make it much easier to reuse it. So first of all, once again, I select select subject and then increase the offset. And just like before, InDesign did a really good job. So we can see the outlines are perfect. Now, in some cases, when you have details like the horn on this image, you might want to avoid text to be divided to the left and the right. So in these cases, you can also set the wrap to option to be only on the left or on the right side, or you can even choose largest area, which normally fixes it really well. So now if I start moving it around, you'll see that there won't be any separation of text here. And the same thing will happen if I move the text on the right side. So I like normally to use the largest area option. And now that we have this set up, we can save this as an object style, which we can find from here on the top. Just simply choose new object style, give it a name, which I will call content aware wrap. And that will make it much easier to reuse it again, maybe on this other page. We just have to select the image in the background and choose from the drop down content aware wrap. And you can already see how the text is getting affected. So I can move it on the left side or on the right side. 
And since we are talking about tax wrap, in some cases when you have an image with more complex details in the background, it might be hard to read the text itself. These can easily be fixed by using a little bit of photoshopping. Let me just show you that very quickly. I will select the image, hold down Alt or Option and then double click on it to have it open in Photoshop. Here, what I'm going to do first of all is to convert this into a smart object, which I can do from the filter menu, convert for smart filters. And you can see that the layer is now set up as a smart object, which means we can use filters non-destructively. But before we do that, I will also use the same exact feature we had in InDesign called subject selection. Within the select menu, I choose subject which will identify again the salient detail, in this case, the girl with the pumpkin. And I will press Command or Control Shift I to invert that selection because I would like to blur the background. Then I go into the filter menu and from blur gallery, I will choose field blur. Once I selected, I can increase the amount of blur, just go a little bit crazy here to something like that. Then I will click OK. And of course, to make this more realistic, I am going to use the Smart Filter Mask with a big soft edge brush and just paint over this part here with black. Maybe around the pumpkin as well, we can show a little bit more detail. Now, of course, this can be further refined, but immediately we have a better backdrop with this shallow depth of field, which will work better to be able to read the text. However, in case you want to make it even more legible, you can also use an adjustment layer. Normally, I would use curves, reduce the brightness, and then use the gradient tool, that's G on the keyboard, and just drag from one side or the other to set it up and keep the side where we want to have the text a little bit darker. So once again, without the adjustment and with, and then without the blur, and with the blur added. Now all we have to do is to just save this as a PSD file and replace the original image here within InDesign with the PSD file. And immediately with these few refinements, the text looks so much more legible on the right side. Of course, this was just a very quick demonstration. We can always spend more time refining the selections and the masks if we wanted to get a more professional result. And since we covered Content Aware Wrap, the new feature in InDesign 2021, is still worth mentioning that there is Content Aware Fit feature available if you want InDesign to automatically find the best crop for your image. In this case, we have a landscape format page and we have a portrait format image. But once I select the Content Aware Fit, it's going to find a very good part of the image that shows all the important and interesting details. Here is another example of yet again a portrait format image. Once I click on Content Aware Fit, it finds the perfect match and the most interesting details to be visible within our crop. The Share for Review option has been also refined in the 2021 version. We can still find it here on the top right corner. And once we choose it, we can give the document a title and then we create this new review for it. The main difference in this version is that we have additional text refinement features for the reviewers. And just in case you haven't used this feature already, whenever you create a review, you will get a link that you can share with anyone or you can directly invite members for reviewing the document. And you have additional options to decide whether you want only those invited have the access or you want to make the review public. In that case, anyone who has the link will be able to make comments. And this is how the review happens within the browser. Whoever got the invitation will be able to play spins to identify the area they refer to, or they can also use the draw shape functionality with which they can maybe refine the edge they wish to use for the text wrap. And on the day of the release of this new version, you will also get additional commenting options here specifically to add text annotations for deleting or replacing text. Once a comment is added in the browser, it immediately shows up within InDesign in the review panel and the designer or creative will be able to respond to those changes by just simply clicking on the comment, which reveals the drawn annotation here, that red line. And once I made my changes, I can either reply to this or I can also set it to be resolved. 
the new text annotation comments won't be directly acceptable within the review panel at first but later on it's going to be made possible. So Share for Review is getting better with each update, but I already use it for most of my project and it is a brilliant feature saving so much time whenever it comes to updating and amending in design documents. There are two improvements or new features about color in the latest version of InDesign. One of them you can find from the edit menu under find change. Now we have the option to search for specific colors in the document. So if I select one of the swatches, I can just choose find the next and immediately it will show the instance, whether it's used on text or an image frame or even as a highlight or even on a vector object. And if we want, we can change this color to another swatch and even specify the tint if we want that to be updated at the same time. Just like other find and change options, this can also be saved as a preset or query, which you can easily reuse in the same document or in other documents as well. Additionally to this, if we go into the color picker, we can now find the HSB values, which wasn't available in InDesign before. Now by selecting either of these values, the preview of the color space is going to update. And this will be much more familiar to you if you are using Photoshop, for instance, where you have the brightness and saturation indicated on the left side, and we have the hue values here on the right side. Notice that thanks to this update, now we can also save swatches based on HSB values, which means that once we go into the swatches area, we will actually see those values used for the name of the swatch as well. And finally, there is also a great way to be able to restore documents that got corrupted. And this is actually something that happened to me a couple of times in InDesign. Now it's included as a service. So whenever you have an issue with a document and get a warning like this one, you can send it to the Adobe servers where the processing is going to happen automatically. And in most cases, you should be able to get back a working version of the InDesign file. I wasn't able to test this service at the time of recording this video, but if you happen to have a corrupted InDesign file and you already updated to 2021 version, this is probably something you should give a try. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.